Virtual environments. They're what we use in Python to allow us to install project dependencies into neat isolated folders instead of directly into our global system Python. Once activated, when we install dependencies, they go into our virtual environment folder instead of our system Python, and we can use them without polluting up our global system. This makes them really lightweight environments that we can dispose of and recreate very easily. So how do they work? We've got a lot of options to create them, VM module, pipenv and poetry to name a few, but whatever you use, the VM for that's created has a structure that's mostly the same and mimics what we see in our system Python. I'm going to create one now with uh, VM. So use the VM module here. And if we open up the uh, browser there, we can see so we have a bin folder, we have Simlink versions of Python, and we have a site packages directory. We also have a pyvmcfg file. So PEP405 specifies how these uh, files work, which introduced the concept of this pyvmcfg file. Um, so Python's going to look for this when deciding on its path configuration. And if that file exists, if you take a look at its contents, it basically looks for key value pairs within it. And if it finds this home value, it's going to use the version of Python that's specified there as the basis for its Python. And it's going to know that this is a virtual environment. That's the important thing, that it knows that we're now talking about a virtual environment and that it's going to be including site packages folder from this relative directory to this bin folder. So we also have within this a whole bunch of shell scripts. So within these shell scripts, we have the setup for virtual environment variables and also modifying our system path to include the bin folder that has these symlinked versions of Python on them. And we also have this deactivate method that when we call that, it's going to, so we, this deactivate method will become available in our shell once we, once we execute this activate script, and then we can deactivate the environment as well. So we can unset all these environment variables. So we have versions of this activate script in bash, fish, PowerShell, whatever you want to use, you can install with that. So let's take a look at how the um, path is actually configured at the moment. So if we echo out the path, we are currently not in an activated virtual environment. So this virtual environment hasn't yet been activated. So it will only be activated when we call this activate script. And you see in here, we've got a whole load of um, stuff. The paths delimited by colons and um, Python will exist in one of these directories here. So these are things that we're going to be able to call from the command line. So if we call Python um, here, in fact, if we do which Python, it's going to tell us where that's coming from. So it's coming from the shims folder, which um, I believe is here. So this is when it's picking up the, the this binary. Importantly, things that are earlier on in this string are going to get executed earlier. So if you put another folder with another Python in it earlier on in that string, that's going to get precedence over and above the one that's listed in the shim. Additionally, we can see with the Python that we're using, which site packages directory it thinks it's going to be using. So here we print out the site packages that we basically run a short script in the command line and print out the site packages directory. And we can see that we're using the one within Python that's listed. Um, you may be using a global version on your system, but I'm using Python as well. So within site packages, those that's where our packages will go if we use something like pip to install there. So if now I uh, then call, so let's clear that and let's call the VM folder and call our activate script. You can see now that we've actually activated that and we've got the VM showing the name of the VM, which is VM. Um, and we've got that showing at the front of our shell prompt there. And now when I install stuff, it, this is the important part, it knows, in fact, actually, let's echo out the path. And you see our path now has a bin folder at the beginning there. So it knows that when we use Python, we're going to be using this Python. And importantly, because this is a PyVM file, it knows to use this site packages directory as well. So this is a symlinked version that goes down to our PyM uh, Py version of Python. 
and this is site packages where all our packages go. So if we also show what our site packages directory is, we can see that it's the one within our VM. And so it's correctly configured this so that we are using the standard library from our Python, but we are using the site packages from this folder. And this makes them really nice. It makes them quite disposable that we can just um, delete this if we wanted to, and we're not going to mess with our global version of Python. So if we actually go ahead and install something, and we'll install requests, and we can see when we go into this that requests now appears in this folder. And if we uninstall it, it'll get removed from there as well. So this folder disappears. And we can deactivate this, because we now have that deactivate command. And we come back out, and we have our path that is set back to normal. And if we run, um, if we look at our site packages again, we can see that our site packages are set back to the PyM version as well. And this is, like I said, really disposable. So it means that we can just run removing that VM. It's gone, but we can just happily recreate our VM and we end up with this structure again. So you can see we haven't got anything in there this time. Um, that not installed anything. So this is the same for, like I said, for any uh, package manager. So if we go ahead and say um, install with poetry, I'm going to set first of all my um, in project variable so that we get it installed within a directory within the folder that I'm in. I've set that to true. So when I go to poetry, in fact, I'm going to have to initialize this. So if we go in poetry, add requests. So it's going to go and grab requests. It's created a VM for me. And we can look at that structure again. We've got the pi VM file, similar to what we had before. We don't have the include folder. This is very similar to what we had before, except for now we've got this wheel set up because obviously poetry um, makes it very easy to publish as well. So we have these wheel um, commands and then we've got the site packages and our requests installed in that which I've just added now so there isn't a lot of complexity to how a virtual environment works and I thought this is really interesting that actually most of it is controlled with just this VM uh, file so yeah virtual environments very useful um, this is very simple how they actually work we've it's actually built into python that it understands that these folders mean certain things and uh, depending on where the um, python appears on the path it means which one we are going to get um, and it's simply a pi vm cfg file is the thing that controls which version we're going to be using and uh, that it is in fact a virtual environment that we're using so yeah, I thought this was really interesting. Hopefully you do too. Um, if you did, uh, then please consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll speak to you soon in a new video. All right, bye for now.